Sup nerds, here's my anti-meta Gramon toolbox deck profile. Starting off with our Tama, we are playing 4 Coromon from starter deck 15. All turns once per turn when attack target is switched, this Digimon gets 1000 DP until the end of the turn. Uh, really important when you're trying to set up huge beefy blockers and you're trying to make sure your opponent can't beat over them uh, very easily. We are running the black base for a few reasons and I'll get into those once we get to the option cards. And for our rookies, we're playing 4 BT12 Agus, uh, Evos on top of Koro for 0. Uh, we're on play, reveal the top four cards of your deck, add a Digimon card with Omnimon or Grandmon in its name, and a Tamer card with Taikami in its name, and then all turns inheritable, uh, Grandmon and Omnimon get 1000 DP. And then we are running two Agumon from the starter deck 15, uh, also he was on top of Korra for zero. Start your main phase if your opponent has Digimon in play, gain one memory. And then all turns once per turn when attack target is switched, gain one memory. Really nice inheritable for making it kind of awkward for your opponent to like force your block because they're going to be losing out on memory every time. And then we are running four Agu X from BT11. Um, is a four hard drop, which kind of sucks. Even on top of Agu for zero on play slash when digivolving. Uh, Villa top three cards of your deck, add a card with Greymon or X antibody in its name and then one black tamer card to your hand. And then all turns inheritable when this Digimon with Greymon or Omnimon in its name would be deleted or returned to the hand or deck. You can bot deck and X antibody from underneath this uh, Digimon sources to prevent that from happening. So this is our protection. Um, we are playing obviously this and the one of Grey X. Um, so that is it. We're actually running 10 rookies in this list, which seems really low, uh, but it's not really. It doesn't feel as low as it actually is now that we have the training cards. And then onto our champions, we are playing four Grandmon from BT12. Evo's on top of Agu and Name for two, so all of our rookies. And then Windage Evolving, if you don't have a Tamer Taikami in its name, you can play one for free. And then all turns inheritable, Grandmon and Undermine get 1,000 DP. And then this is one of the reasons we are playing the black base, is we get access to this guy, which is pretty good. Uh, Greymon from Sardic 15, um, Evo's on top of uh, Digimon with Agumon name for two as well. Um, the security effect is you can play an Agumon or a Tamer card with Taikami in its name from your hand without paying the cost. So you get to play one of your rookies for free potentially. You can't play Agu X from it, uh, but you can play all of our Tamers in this deck, spoilers, um, which is really nice. Also, it does just generically have blocker. And then the all turns effect inheritable when attack target is switched, gain a memory. So this also makes it very awkward for your opponent to force your blocks out. And then we are playing the obligatory one of Grandmon X from BT11. He was on top of Grandmon for zero. Uh, your turn when this Digimon would Digivolve into a Digimon card with Grandmon its same, reduce the cost by one for each color. And then the all turns inheritable is the same as the Agu X. Um, while this Digimon has Grandmon or Omnimon its name, and would be deleted or returned to the hand or deck. Uh, you can bot deck next antibody option underneath it to prevent it from happening. And that is it. We are only playing nine champions. And then onto our ultimates. We are playing four Metal Greymon from BT12. Eve's on top of Greymons for three, so ignore that. Um, you can choose, since this is a black deck, uh, you can choose to pay four uh, if you would like to, like if you're trying to choke your opponent to one or something like that. That is something that can come up with that guy as well as this guy, the ability to choose between those two. So that is something to keep in mind if you're trying to choke your opponent to one. Um, he has Raid, which means when he attacks, you may switch the attack target to the Digimon of the highest DP on your opponent's side of the field. If it's a tie, you just pick one. Uh, and then all turns once per turn, when attack target is switched, you may play a black or red Tamer card with four or less without paying the cost, which is pretty nice. And then the Inheritable is your turn while Sigimon has Grandmon and Armon at the same, it gains Piercing. Um, so a nice combo with this if you're running X anybody, which spoilers we are. Uh, as you swing with this guy, um, with XM underneath, you trigger Raid, redirection to one of their guys, play a Tamer, and then trigger X anybody to Evo into a big beefy dude and run through their guy with Piercing. And then we are running four Metal X uh, from BT11. It does just hard Evo for four if you don't have a Metal Grandma underneath them. Um, but it's actually not that big of a deal anymore now that we have the training cards. Um, as well as if you see the one of Grandma X, it will reduce it as well. But it does Evo for one on top of Metal Greymon, which is nice. And then when Digivolving, until the end of your opponent's turn, the Digimon can't have its DP reduced by your opponent's effects or de evo by your opponent's effects. Then if Metal Greymon X anybody is in its sources, you can delete, or you have to delete, it's not, man it's not optional, it's mandatory, you have to delete a Digimon of 6,000 DP or less on your opponent's side of the field. So this is really good for the vaccine matchup because all of their removal, uh, besides Angemon specifically, is dp based so if you do this on a turn you go into a big dude it doesn't matter what they do they can't out your guy if it's not a virus that's something to keep in mind 
And then the Inheritable is very, very good. Uh, opponent's turn once per turn when Digimon becomes unsuspended. If the Digimon has Greymon or Armin its name, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. So this is something that a lot of people uh, forget or don't realize. This does not care what gets unsuspended. And it doesn't care when it happens. So like if your opponent swings and unsuspends by their effect or something like that, or they're just unsuspending during their unsuspend phase, and your guy's just standing there, um, it will trash a top card. It doesn't care what's happening as far as that's concerned. It's just it's still going to trash a top card regardless of who unsuspends. And that is it. We are just playing eight ultimates. On to our Megas. We are running three of the best War Greymon ever printed. Um, does Evo for four on top of black. So once again, if you're trying to choke your opponent to one, you can choose this cost. But it does also just Evo on top of Metal Greymon and name for three. Um, does have Raid. When Digivolving till the end of your opponent's turn, this Digimon gets plus 3,000 DP and Reboot. And then all turns once per turn when an attack target is switched, unsuspend this Digimon. So this guy just lets you raid through your opponent's stuff. Very nice. Also gets to double block, which is really cool. And one of the reasons why we're playing this guy, um, besides the fact that he's just a really good effect, is because he is a vaccine type. And that is very good if you just have a giant vaccine blocker that can't be DP reduced against the vaccine deck. Because their Andromon can only activate its effect to put your stuff on the top bottom of your security. It's if a virus. Um, so it's very important to be able to go into Vaccine Digimon against them so they can't just easily out your guy with their Andromon for free because uh, that feels really, really bad. And then we are also playing three Black War X. Um, does just hard Evo for five on your guys. Um, we're not playing any Black Wars, so this uh, separate Digivol effect does not come up. Um, this actually, this doesn't feel bad either. Um, one, because we have the defense trainings, which let us reduce this to three. But also, a lot of times you'll be swinging with your stuff and then triggering X anybody to Evo into this guy to pass turn. And then he has Reboot, which is really nice. And then he has opponent's turn once per turn. When an opponent's Digimon with the highest DP attacks, you can switch the attack target to this guy. So it's a block without block and it's just redirection. And also opponent's turn once per turn. When a Digimon becomes unsuspended, if this Digimon has Black War or the X antibody option in its sources, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest play cost. So this also doesn't care what's being unsuspended. Um, so this is just extra free removal, uh, which is really nice because most of the times when you go into this guy, you will have the X antibody option underneath him. Um, but even if you don't, you do still get the redirect effect, which is really nice. And he's just a giant dude that's just gonna be in, in your opponent's way. Um, keep in mind, this guy is a virus type. Um, so going into this guy against the vaccine deck is definitely a risk. Um, if they have the ability to go into Angemon, um, he's probably going to be outed for basically free. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. You basically just want to prioritize going into this guy or staying as your BT12 metal because those are that's also a vaccine. And that is it for our Megas. We're just playing six. Onto our level sevens. We are playing two Omnimon Merciful Mode. Uh, does Evo for six on top of your Megas um, is kind of expensive, but the deck that we're playing this for, it doesn't really matter if you give them a bunch of memory um, just because of how this guy interacts with their deck. Uh, also, for some reason, if you have the ability to Evo into this guy without passing turn, if you have the second one in your hand, you can Evo for three um, on top of the Omnimon because it's just Omnimon in name. Um, I, the odds of you being able to double Omnimon Merciful Mode somebody are pretty low, but just in case it does come up, just something to keep in mind. So when Digivolving, for each card with Mega in their traits in this Digimon's Digivolution cards, delete one of your opponent's Digimon, then place 10 cards from your opponent's trash at the bottom of their deck in any order. So the reason why we're playing this card is because this is an excellent answer to the Lugamon deck. There's a couple of reasons why. It's not just the bot deck effect. A lot of times if you do not have the protection effect, or even if you do, your opponent can just hard play a Hell Lugamon to pass turn, and it'll either force the protection, um, which in against this deck it would force me to bot deck an X antibody option, which I would need to have a second one in hand to further protect it. But with this guy in play, they can't pop it with Helugramon. They have to go into Finn and try to combo in order to delete this guy. Because most of them are not playing removal outside of Finn Relugramon or Helugramon. Um, so this forces their hand. But also, because he bot decks all of their combo pieces, they're not going to be able to just uh, Finn Relugramon you on their turn. No matter, even if you gave them 10 memory with this card. They, they're not, it's going to be very hard for them to combo into you to, to play a bunch of dudes out to pop this guy anyway. So you're just going to be sitting on their, sitting on your field. Um, pretty much of Invincible versus that deck. And then the start of your turn, you trash the top card of this Digimon, so he just trashes himself. And then you trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. Let's say you go into Raid War Grey, uh, Swing Swing, whatever. 
Evo into this guy to pass turn. He maintains the reboot, so he will reboot. Uh, you trash the top card of your opponent's security stack if you have the Metal X in the stack. And then they're not going to be able to out this guy. They're basically just going to have to sit, just stare at it, and just try to set up again for the next turn. Uh, so at the beginning of your turn, you trash the top card of him, and then trash top card of your opponent's security stack, and you'll be able to do even more stuff with your War Greymon again, or your Black War X, whoever underneath this guy. And then if you have another one, it's probably GG's, because at that point your opponent's not going to have any security left, and they're not going to be able to set up anymore. Also, this is another thing to do versus the Vaccine deck, because if you have this guy, obviously you're only playing three of the Raid War Greys, so some games you're not going to see it versus them. You can Evo into Merciful Mode, and he's a Vaccine, so he's not going to be able to get outed by the Angemon on their turn. And then he'll turn back into the Black War X on your turn, so you can further abuse uh, your Black War X effects. So all around, I think this is just a really good meta call for decks that have access to him. Um, I would consider honestly playing three, but I'm also playing a third level seven that is not Merciful Mode, but I wouldn't blame you if you cut that card and just played three of this, just so you could see it in the matchups that it really impacts. Um, but yeah, definitely a very good card for this meta. Just really, really strong. And our third level seven is one Death X. Uh, we're only really playing one because we can search this off of our defense training cards because it's half black. 20 play costs, six to hard Evo, which you can Evo on top of your your Megas if your opponent has like a Solar Mon out or something like that and you really want to Death X their field. You can just Evo into the sky for six. It's not a big deal. And you can actually defense training into the sky because he's a black Digimon. So you can Evo into him for four, which is pretty sick. Uh, you cannot training into Merciful Mode though, unfortunately, because it is a white card. Uh, so the effects, if you guys are unfamiliar with this card, when you would play this card, reduce its memory cost by three for each of your Digimon and Tamer your opponent has in play. So if they have seven permanents out between Digimon and Tamers, this guy comes down for free, which is just filthy. So these are preemptive versus Fenrir Lugamon. This guy comes down if they popped off. If you're playing around them correctly, the turn they pop off, they won't be able to kill you if you don't have anything in play. So you just Death X them after you promote your stack and then you just swing over whatever's, whatever remnants are left on their board. And it, they're gonna be set back by quite a bit. Um, but his on play slash when digivolving effect is digivolve one, all of your opponent's Digimon, then delete all of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon. Um, absolutely insane board wiping effect. And then end of opponent's turn once per turn, delete all of your opponent's Digimon at the lowest play cost. So unless they out this guy, he is going to continuously do something to their board at the end of their turn. Um, this card's pretty nasty and it's definitely going to see a resurgence in this format just because of... The Vaccine deck is going to be playing Tamers like crazy. Uh, Shine Greymon is going to be playing their Tamers, obviously. And Finn, if they pop off on you, they're going to have like 15 things on the field uh, between like all their Tamers and, and their bodies. Um, so this guy will probably come down for free against Finn a lot of the time. Even if they don't pop off, they play so many analog use and stuff like that. You're probably going to play this for pretty cheap versus Finn pretty much at any point past like turn four or five. Um, but I don't see the need to play more than one because... This is an answer card. I don't want to just have it sitting dead in my hand while I'm like winning the game. And also it's searchable off the defense training, like I said. Also, one more thing, this guy's a virus. Keep that in mind versus the vaccine deck. But a lot of times you just play this guy for free. So basically they're just outing nothing. Um, so that's not a big deal. But that is it. We're playing three level sevens. On to our tamers. One of the other reasons we are playing black base is so we play the black training card to search our tamers. And we are running three Taikamiya from BT12, three cost tamer. Uh, we're playing this because we want to be defensive, and this is one of the best ways to give your stacks blocker. This, basically any way to give uh, Greymon.deck blocker, you have to be playing black in some way. Uh, like BT8 Greymon is the other way, but it's also just a pure black card. Um, but I chose to give blocker by just playing this Takamiya. Uh, start your main phase slash on play. One of your Digimon with Agumon or Greymon at its name gets 1,000 DP and gains blocker until the end of your opponent's turn. Something cool is, so let's say you go into Omnimon, this guy cannot give Omnimon blocker, but at the beginning of your main, at the beginning of your turn, this guy gets trashed and it goes back to being a Greymon, so you can immediately go back to being a blocker. That's another reason why this card's so good for this deck. And then your turn, one of your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon with Greymon or Omnimon in its name. By suspending this Tamer, gain one memory. So this guy does interact with that. You can gain memory off Evo into this guy, which is pretty nice. And then we're playing two Taikamiya from Starter Deck 15. Uh, I considered, I bounced between this and uh, Yuya from BT11. 
The issue with Yuya is you only get that 2000 DP the turn you Evo into a Digimon with Greymon in its name. And you can't just continuously proc it, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, this probably would be Yuya. Um, but this guy is just overall better for the deck. Because you don't really have a terrible matchup versus like security control like decks anyway. So it's not really a big deal that you don't have access to Yuya. Uh, but this guy also being Taikami is obviously really nice because it's searchable off our Agu and it's playable off of all of our effects that play Taikami is. Uh, so this is a memory setter, so it sets you to three at the beginning of your turn. And then all turns, when an attack target is switched, by suspending this tamer, draw one, and then one of your Digimon gets 2,000 DP until the end of your turn. I wish this was until the end of your opponent's turn. That's the only downside of this card, is if you proc it on your turn, you can't proc it again on your opponent's turn because it'll be suspended. Being able to basically continuously give your guy 2,000 DP as well as drawing into your deck at will is really cool. It's a really cool way to play around Mirage because the only draw power, the only cards that add things to your hand in this deck is this guy and your Agu X and then your training cards. That's it. So like you can very easily play around Mirage, which is really nice. Um, that is it. We're just playing five Tamers. We're only playing five because, again, all of our searching search, searches these cards. So like you're going to see them um most games without really trying to look for them but also hunters is still a deck so you don't want to just auto lose to hunters because they check a tamer out of your security and you just you're just like oh cool extend handshake i guess you win um so keeping your tamer count low is really nice versus decks that you just don't want to play tamers against also death x is a card so again you don't want to just have a bunch of tamers just sitting on your field to get death x for free onto our options we are playing three x antibody from bt9 Zero cost option, while you have Digimon in play, you may use this card without meaningless color requirements. Uh, security, gain one memory, then add it to your hand. Main, you can place this card under one Digimon without the X antibody option underneath it as its bottom source. And then the inheritables are all turns. Uh, effects cannot trash this from sources. And when attacking this Digimon, it can Digivolve into a Digimon card with X antibody and its traits for the cost. So this is our protection, as well as our combos with Raid War Gray as well as being able to proc Black War X's destruction effects. You kind of almost want to play four in this deck, but at that point it would be extremely cloggy. Um, but I will admit there are some games where you may miss this card. So I'd understand if you felt the need to bump this up to four, um, but most games you're gonna see at least one playing three of it, especially when it adds itself to your hand out of security. And then we're of course running four defense trainings, uh, the black training card that we just got as a promo box topper in BT14. Two cost option, main reveal the top two cards of your deck, add a black card among them to your hand, return the rest of the bottom of your deck. As you'll notice, this adds any black card, doesn't matter if it's trainer, tamer, or Digimon, or whatever else they may come out with. Um, this just adds a black card. Um, so it adds basically everything in the deck besides the Omnis and the X antibody options. It, it just searches basically the entire deck. Uh, Securities place this as a card in the battle area, and then the main delay effect is one of your Digimon may digivolve into a black Digimon card in your hand for its evolution cost. When you would digivolve by this effect, reduce the cost by two. So basically, you you send this to the trash to trigger this effect to Evo for a reduced cost into a black card. It has to be into a black card. So like I said, you can't trigger this to Evo into Omnimon. Um, that is something to keep in mind. It's easy to forget. I have forgotten that, so keep that in mind. Um, but these cards are amazing. These cards are going to be a really big boost to all decks that are trainer-centric, but also just want to play consistency cards. Um, I think this is going to be really good for the game. Um, but yeah, amazing cards. I'm really happy about those because let me cut down on like my ratios and just not miss anything. And then last but not least, we are playing Double Hades Force from BT11. Hey, guess what can search Hades Force? A defense training card, pretty nice. Being able to search this off the top as opposed to bot decking it off of a memory boost card. Um, one of my favorite things, it actually is the reason why I don't really feel the need to play Black War in this deck. Um, although the reason we aren't playing Black War in this deck, um, if I'm being honest, is just because the vaccine deck exists. And if your entire top end is virus, you kind of just auto lose to that deck because Angemon just outs your stuff for free. Raid War Gray is a very good mega that you can play in Black War Gray's place to where like you can go into it and your opponent can't answer it easily. And since we're playing this card and have access to it, you don't really miss Black War. And honestly, being able to Evo for three into a Raid War Gray uh, definitely comes up pretty often. Um, but Hades Force 7 cost option. Uh, when you would play this card, if you have Digimon with X antibody in its sources, reduce the cost by two. It is referring specifically to the option, by the way. So you can play this for five if you have a Digimon with X antibody in the sources. Main, choose any number of your opponent's Digimon and or Tamers who combine play costs are less than or equal to a play cost of one of your Digimon with Greymon in its name. 
Delete all of the chosen cards, then one of your Digimon with Greymon in its name may attack a player. This card is broken being able to play it for five, I will say that. Um, it does require you to have something in play, obviously, and I think that's the kind of balance to it. But when you go into one of your big dudes, if he survives a turn or if you're able to go into him without passing turn, and you have an ex-antibody at source, being able to play this for five and basically like board wipe your opponents like tamers or whatever they have in play is really filthy. This card's amazing. I, if we didn't have access to the training cards, I would probably play three of this just to see it consistently. But being able to search it off these guys, I don't feel the need to play more than two anymore, which is, it's really nice. Like this, tra the training card is, like they're amazing. I'm really happy that we got these. Uh, security effect is delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest play cost. So it just pops highest play cost. Um, if it's a tie, you do get to choose. But other than that, it's uh, not a choice. Um, but yeah, an amazing, amazing uh, option card. I'm very happy to have access to this since we can't play Black War. But that is it for the list. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, anything I didn't address, feel free to leave them down in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer anything. Uh, but I appreciate you guys stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy some of this kind of content. Want to come back for more? But until next time, see ya.